a modern apprenticeship qualification, <laughs> have an employment rate of 91.4%. Thank you. Uh, that ends but follow questions. We now move to general questions. Question number one, Jim Eady. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what updates it receives from NHS Lothian regarding the operation of the key terms of the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh's Private Finance Initiative contract. Cabinet Secretary, Alex Neil. Presiding Officer, the management and monitoring of the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh Private Finance Initiative contract is the responsibility of NHS Lothian. Scottish Government officials meet regularly with representatives of NHS Lothian to discuss capital planning, property and asset management issues and any significant issues relating to the contract are raised by this route. Jamidi. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. The Performance Review Committee established under the PFI contract with Consort Healthcare is responsible for the oversight of the assessment of key performance indicators and service delivery. Given the catalogue of serious performance failures at the hospital, highlighted by the Edinburgh Evening News, which have included repeated power cuts and serious breaches of hygiene standards, how can the people of Edinburgh and Lothian have any confidence in this committee's ability to hold Consort Healthcare to account? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, the management and monitoring of the Royal Infirmary contract is the responsibility of NHS Lothian, and I am sure the Board takes a very active role in managing this contract. It has employed its own management team, complete with auditors, who carry out random checks on the facilities, with approximately 80 audits carried out every month. It has also instigated two further forums to discuss performance and ensure the providers meet specification. These meetings are facilitated at both a senior level board to board and through scorecard review. The Scottish Government is making every effort to improve contract management of existing private finance initiative contracts. An NHS Scotland group, including all boards with PFI contracts, the Scottish Government and Scottish Futures Trust, have been working to improve management and deliver savings on these contracts. A new national team will be established to support NHS boards in finding other improvements. This work has already achieved £1.3 million worth of annual savings, which will save £20 million over the remaining life of the contracts. By the end of 2014-15, savings over the remaining life of the contracts will rise to £26 million. These savings will be reinvested in NHS services. Question number two, in the name of Tavish Scott, has not been lodged. The member has provided an explanation. Question number three. Alex Johnson. To ask the Scottish Government whether it has undertaken any further investigation into whether an over-reliance on wind turbines as a source of electricity played a role in the grid failure of the 16th of April 2014. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Uh, President Officer, on the 22nd of April I set out the reasons for the power outage on the 16th of April and submitted to SPICE a comprehensive note outlining the contributing factors. Alex Johnson. I thank the Minister for his answer. On that day, he told me that Scottish and Southern Electric uh, Energy Power Distribution discovered a faulty electronic relay, uh, which was identified as the cause of the problem. However, engineering opinion, uh, which has been volunteered to me in many cases, uh, suggests that far from failing, that this relay, in fact, did exactly what it was supposed to do, and that the cause of that trip is, the, uh, is yet to be identified. Will the Minister uh, undertake at this stage to make available the engineering incident report from SSE so that independent op uh, opinion can be sought? Cabinet Secretary. The, uh, well, the point that I relayed to Parliament uh, back on the 22nd of April was the information supplied to me by Scottish and Southern Energy that a fault in the electronic relay at the Notnagale substation near Inverness was the root cause of the outage. Um, in addition, SSE have advised me that they are engaging closely with technical experts at Siemens, uh, the manufacturer of the relay, to ensure that this fault will not occur in future on SSE's network. Um, so I think the, the, the position in that respect could not be clearer from Scottish and Southern Energy that the reason for the power outage was the one that I gave to Parliament quite uh, back in April. So I, I hope that gives Mr Johnson the reassurance that he's looking for that the examination by those who are responsible for run, running the, the, the operating the grid um, has identified that as the particular problem with which, which led to the circumstances in April of this year. 
Question number four, Annabel Ewing. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how many jobs have been created in Scotland in the last 10 years as a result of inward investment. Cabinet Secretary, John Swinney. Presiding Officer, between April 2003 and March 2013, Scottish Development International recorded 39,527 planned new jobs as a direct result of inward investment. In addition to these new jobs, through the efforts of Scottish Development International, we have also been able to safeguard 24,639 jobs for Scotland. The 2013 Ernst & Young International Attractiveness Survey shows that outside London, Scotland is the most attractive place in the UK for inward investment. This reflects the strength of the Scottish economic proposition in terms of the quality of our people, the excellence of our built and natural assets, and our world-class universities and research base. Question number four. Sorry, Annabel Ewing. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary uh, for his uh, comprehensive answer, but is it not the case that many of these jobs would be threatened if the anti-EU parties such as UKIP got their way and took us out of the EU single market? Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, uh, undoubtedly, um, being uh, participants within the European Union assists in the economic proposition that we put forward on Scotland's behalf. And, uh, clearly, the Scottish Government um, takes a number of other measures to ensure that we have the skills, the investment and the capability within the economy and also an, uh, an, an economic development network that is focused on the purpose of boosting the Scottish economy and um, working at all times on Scotland's behalf. Um, so, undoubtedly, um, if uh, parties like UKIP were to get their way and we were to be withdrawn from the European Union, um, that would have negative economic consequences for Scotland. Um, but this government is determined to sustain Scotland's active membership of the European Union. Ken McIntosh. Given the uh, revelation that uh, Amazon only paid £4.2 million worth of tax on a £4.3 billion turnover last year, and given the Scottish Government's welcome decision in the procurement bill not to recognise companies for procurement purposes that do not recognise trade unions, will the Cabinet Secretary revisit the Government's decision to give grants to this supposed inward investor? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the, 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 the Government uh, takes a series of decisions based on um, a range of factors, one of which is the identification of economic opportunities that can lead to increased employment within Scotland. And those judgments are, are, are carefully made. They are made looking at the investment proposals that are, made, that are offered by particular companies. Um, we obviously secure from those uh, particular commitments, and it's an essential part of regional selective assistance, commitments to levels of employment that are made to the Scottish economy. And the government will continue to uh, apply those approaches and those, the implementation of those rules in an effective and comprehensive fashion to encourage employment within Scotland. Question number five, Alison Johnson. Um, to ask the Scottish Government what action it will take to improve the care of older patients in Lothian region. Cabinet Secretary Alex Neil. Presiding Officer, I am aware of the recent media coverage about the care of older people in NHS Lothian and welcome their commitment to address the issues raised by the Mental Welfare Commission in relation to care at the Royal Edinburgh Hospital. It is recognised that the Royal Edinburgh Hospital would benefit from development and the Scottish Government has approved the business case for a £48.9 million upgrade to the facility. We will also work with Health Boards, COSLA and service providers to develop a strategy for the long-term transformation of residential care, supported housing and intermediate care across Scotland, helping ensure people are cared for at home or in a homely setting for as long as possible. Alison John. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his response. Concerns over the resources available to deliver dementia care in the Royal Edinburgh Hospital have been raised by patients' families and they had to FOI an inspection report from the Mental Health Commission. And the report detailed concerns over delays in discharging patients because of a severe lack of nursing home places in Edinburgh and a related lack of activities for patients who end up in hospital for a prolonged period. I don't want to criticise staff. Clearly, there's issues around the lack of staffing. Can we just get a question, staffing. Ms Johnson? Yes, and there's reports of excellent care too. Um, but clearly, we'll have to wait for the upgrade. I'd appreciate information on what will happen in the meantime. And can the Minister explain why families have to use FOI legislation to obtain these reports 
Will he make them readily available? And what steps will he take to ensure that recommendations are implemented? Cabinet Secretary. The presenting officer, uh, we are monitoring the situation very closely and we will make absolutely sure that the recommendations of the Mental Welfare Commission are implemented in this particular hospital because clearly their findings were totally unacceptable. Uh, NHS Lothian at the moment is currently consulting on their 2014 to 2024 strategic plan for future care called Our Health our care, our future, and that describes what NHS Lothian proposes to do over the coming decade to address the challenges and provide a high quality and sustainable healthcare system for the people of Lothian. NHS Lothian also has an Alzheimer's Scotland nurse consultant and 38 trained dementia champions across its acute hospitals, and I would hope that the improvements we will see will be short-term while the long-term strategy is being developed. Question number six, Alex Ferguson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it's taken to support householders and businesses whose properties were damaged by flooding in January 2014. Mr Paul Wheelhouse. Uh, in response to the December and January floods, the Cabinet Secretary for Finance, Employment and Sustainable Growth triggered the Bellwin scheme on 31st December. As a result, Scottish Borders, Orkney Islands and South Lanarkshire Councils all notified the Scottish Government of potential claims for revenue funding under the scheme. Having considered their additional costs resulting from the flooding incident, all three councils confirmed that their additional costs did not breach the Bellwind threshold, which would have allowed them to submit a claim. However, Dumfries and Galloway Council requested additional financial support out with the Bellwind scheme to make repairs to riverbanks, seawalls and coastal paths damaged as a direct result of severe flooding. The Cabinet Secretary for Finance, Employment and Sustainable Growth reviewed the request and, reflecting the exceptional circumstances, agreed to make available an offer of match funding of uh, £500,000 of capital grant to allow the Council to carry out necessary repairs. Alex Ferguson. Um, I thank the Minister for that response, and he's indeed correct uh, uh, that uh, the Scottish Government has made funding available to the Council. But the fact is that the, fact, the very fact that the Council had to appeal to the Scottish Government for help uh, underlines the fact that it has no available finance itself to help local businesses and householders repair the very extensive damage that they've suffered. So will he encourage the Cabinet Secretary for Finance and Sustainable Growth to meet with NFUS representatives to discuss what can be done to help meet the crippling cost of coastal defence repairs, particularly on the west bank of the NIF, as has been requested in a recent letter from the NFUS into which the Minister has been copied? And would he also undertake to uh, attend any such meetings himself to explore what his government can do to help mitigate the worst effects of what was a truly extreme weather event? Minister. Well, I mean, uh, what I can say to, to Mr Ferguson is that I've already met NFUS myself to discuss the, uh, the impacts that there were on Dumfries and Galloway, the region he, he represents, and to look at the, what assistance we can provide. That was attended by Scottish Government sponsor team and also SEPA, and we gave some practical advice about what action could be taken to repair the damage that had been, uh, had been made to defences there. I'm sure that the Cabinet Secretary has, has heard your points. Um, and uh, I will discuss, discuss them with him after this, this meeting, but uh, to be assured that we are serious about trying to help farmers and those of other businesses and householders that have been affected. And we do invest uh, uh, significant amounts of money on an annual basis, £42 million a year through the General Capital Grant to support uh, protection of communities across Scotland. But I take the points he's made and I will look at what else we can do. Question number seven, Roderick Campbell. To ask the Scottish Government how it could, would attract overseas students to study in an independent Scotland. Cabinet Secretary Michael Russell. Uh, Presiding Officer, Scotland is already a highly attractive destination for students with international students accounting for 22% of enrolments at Scottish HEIs in 2012-13, with just 18% in the UK as a whole. The numbers have grown significantly in recent years, with international student enrolments in Scotland increasing by 107% in the last decade. Students come to Scotland because of their reputation of our world-class institutions, their research, their breadth of learning, focus on graduate employability, and the overall learning experience for international students, which is better than for the rest of the UK and, indeed, for the rest of the world. Independence will provide us with the levers we need to further enhance Scotland's attractiveness to international students. It will allow us to move away from the negative rhetoric of the UK government and its restrictive immigration policies. We will ensure that the immigration policies that we introduce, including the post-study work visa, will allow Scotland to attract and retain world-class talent, contributing to our education system and to the economy.
Rick Campbell. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Professor uh, Anton Muscatelli has said of the Scottish higher education that the UK Government is trying its best to destroy a global bland, brand by reducing net migration. Professor Wright has described the way the UK treats international students as a disaster. That contrasts with the recent China Girls Abroad survey, which concludes that independence will make Scotland less attractive to Chinese students. Can the Cabinet Secretary comment on potentially contrasting views? I think the evidence that comes from the Vice Principal and Vice Chancellor of Glasgow University is particularly telling uh, and, of course, very strongly expressed in the, in the Sunday Post this weekend. It would undoubtedly be, according to Robert Wright, who has also commented, a disaster uh, if the continuing immigration policy of the UK government was to bear down even more upon the students coming to Scottish universities. Uh, I think that, in, as a result, the global brand of Scottish higher education, which is already well respected worldwide, could only be enhanced by independence. And in these circumstances, I think listening to the academics who are telling that is extremely important. Question eight, Jimmy Hepburn. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update and improvements to the motorway network in central Scotland. Minister, it's Brown. Uh, the MPD contract for the M8, M73, M74 motorway improvements was awarded in February 2014 and construction work is already well underway. Together with the M74 and M80 improvements which have been successfully delivered in the last three years, these improvements, when completed in spring 2017, will close the last remaining gaps in central Scotland's motorway network. Jamie Hepburn. Yeah, I thank the Minister for that answer. Transport Scotland have also confirmed that they will reopen the junction of the M80 at Castle Cary in my constituency to all traffic. Castle Cary residents have long had concerns about traffic through their village. Does the Minister join me in welcoming the fact that not only will the junction be reopened, but Transport Scotland have also committed to a, a range of traffic calming measures through Castle Cary itself? Minister. Well, I would confirm to the member that officials from Transport Scotland have had a number of public consultation events to discuss the reopening of the northbound Castle Cary slip road, and these have been very successful. We're now taking forward the publication of the necessary orders to allow the reopening of the slip road mentioned by the member to take place to all traffic. The publication of these orders will allow the public to make any comment or representations prior to implementation. And as the member says, as part of this work, we're discussing traffic management measures with Castle Cary Village, Village with uh, North Lancashire Council. Question number nine, Willie Coffey. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what funding support Creative Scotland has provided to organisations in Kilmarnock and Irvine Valley in the last year. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Uh, Creative Scotland, the public body that supports Scotland's arts, screen and creative industries, provided over £215,000 to organisations in the Kilmarnock and Irvine Valley in 2013-14. This supported activities for young people to engage in music in schools through the Youth Music Initiative, to engage with Generation 2014 at the Dick Institute a landmark series of exhibitions tracing the development of contemporary art in Scotland over the last 25 years as part of the Glasgow 2014 cultural programme, support for a debut album for a band of young local musicians and support for an e-book in the Scots language for young people from Giglets, a digital publishing company. Holy coffee. Thank you. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for the detail and that answer. D despite the answer given, though, there does appear to be a dearth of successful applications uh, coming from a constituency when you consider the, the total amount of grant and aid disbursed by the agency of some £46 million. Pounds. Would the Cabinet Secretary agree to meet with me perhaps to discuss this further and see how best we can help more local organisations to improve their, their chances of making successful applications to the agency? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I don't think it would be appropriate for myself to meet about individual applications. I think it would be appropriate for Creative Scotland to meet with the member and indeed to discuss the wealth of talent there is in Kilmarnock. Of course, Kilmarnock won the Creative Place Award in 2012-13. And I have uh, particularly uh, been impressed with a number of their activities, and particularly Centre Stage Music Theatre. And I know Creative Scotland have already engaged with them about considering one of their unsuccessful applications to see what they can do for the young people of Scotland. And I will encourage Creative of Scotland to engage with the member. We now move straight on to First Minister's questions. Question number one, Joanne Lamont. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the First Minister what engagements he